So this function h of yt, which is the probability that a chip in position y gets to the origin in time t, this function is very important for the problem, but it's also very hard to write down an exact formula for because you have all the different kinds of steps and uh, there could be many different ways that you can get to the same place. So it would be really hard to write down. But it's kind of easy to write an approximation for if you just use a Gaussian function that I'm going to call g of yt. Uh, so yeah, this is a random walk after all. It's a sum of independent steps, so we can approximate it by the Gaussian. And there is an error in that approximation, which we are going to have to be very careful with. But for now, let's just leave it there as an error. So the influence, where is the influence? There. The influence is the new probability minus the old probability. And notice that those two terms use uh, different times. So the first one has t minus 1 time units, and the next one has t. That would get um, kind of messy, so we use this relationship to rewrite it as this. And then we just define another function called influence g to be the exact same thing but using the approximation Gaussian instead of the actual probability function. And if we plug this into the sum, if we plug this into the double sum that we had before, we just get this. We get a double sum of the influence g's and uh, some error terms that we are going to look at later. But first, we want to make this even simpler because the influence g is also not really a function that we can look at very easily. But we can use a Taylor series approximation for that, and that's going to make it a lot easier. So as a Taylor approximation, this is what it is. Uh, g prime is uh, d dy. So again, we plug it in, and now we have a first term, which is very nice looking. It is just, it is just uh, the derivative of the Gaussian, and a whole lot of error terms that can look ugly, but let's begin by just looking at the first sum, which is the approximation. g prime is a unimodal function, so it goes only up once and down once. And the inside sum that we're looking at has those a, k coefficients, which are actually alternating numbers. They're positive and negative because the a, k's are the sizes of the steps, and some of them are to the left and some of them are to the right. So when you take an alternating sum of values in a unimodal function, that sum is upper bounded by the maximum value of the function, which in this case is this number that is like 1 over y squared. So that is good, because like we said before, now we can sum that over y and get a constant. So basically that's it for the approximation, and now we just have to look at the error terms. So let's look at the error from the Taylor series first. That is a picture of it for just some arbitrarily chosen values of y equals 20 and standard deviation equals 3. So it's just one walk. Um, we could, first thing we can think to try is to bound the sum of the errors by the integral, right? But that doesn't really work because some term shows up here, which is uh, g of y t0, which is like 1 over y, and that cannot be summed. So what would be really interesting was if influence g itself was unimodal, so then the error t's would not even exist. But maybe that is too much to ask, that if g is unimodal. Uh, g prime is unimodal, but maybe the influence g can be unimodal just in certain ranges, and then we get to sum the errors like this in just other ranges, where this term will hopefully not show up. So in order to figure out what ranges, in what ranges, the influence g is actually unimodal. We can look at this picture here. This is a unimodal function approximating another one that is not really unimodal. It's uh, going in a squiggly way around the function. And you can see that on the top there, it actually goes up and down. 
a bunch of times. We don't know that the influence does that, but we must uh, consider the possibility. So the range is where the approximated function is going to be also unimodal are the ranges where the sign of this derivative is the same. So when one is increasing, the other is also increasing. That happens when the error in the approximation of the derivative is less in absolute value than the approximation for the derivative itself. So the, well, delta influence instead of derivative, since we're only interested in times, integer times, right? But it's the same thing. So this is the approximation, and that is the error. Those three are the errors. I'm just going to look at the first one, because the other two are exactly the same. So we want that second term here to be smaller in absolute value than the first one. So we want the ratio to be less than 1, and here is a picture of the ratio. 1 is here. So we see that there are two ranges where it doesn't work, which are the ranges where we will actually have to sum the errors from the Taylor series. So the first range ends in t equals to constant times y, some constants. So in order to be on the safe side, we can consider y log y instead. And uh, when we integrate the errors from the Taylor series in this range, just from 0 to y log y, we get something that is decreasing in y fast enough to be summed over y. And the other range is exactly the same thing. We can take just a small, small window around that, and uh, the sum is also small enough in y to be summed. And finally, we also have the errors from the approximation by a Gaussian. And actually, this error is bounded by 1 over t, which is not good at all, because the first term is in t. And when we sum that, that's already too big. But there are further approximations that we can make to h uh, instead of just the plain Gaussian, we can add more terms to make the approximation more precise. And when we do that, we decrease the error. Now, I just wrote this one here, which has an error t to the 5 halves. But uh, you can get as small an error as you want if you add more terms here. And I ended up using actually two, an, a further one than this, which is, has an error of t to the 7 halves. And so that, that error sums easily, but the thing is that now we have all these other terms that has to satisfy the same thing. Uh, the sum in y of the sum in t of each of these terms has to be bounded by a constant. So that is a long and boring calculation, but it works out exactly the same way as the things that we showed before. And uh, so we conclude that the whole thing is bounded by a constant, so that in z, every walk is propient.